Welcome everyone! We finally arrived at the last episode of this series Voices from the Past, Messages to Build the Future. We have been talking together with Chan about the history of angioplasty and we moved from doctor in the US until Andreas in Europe. In this last episode, from the legs to coronaries, how Andreas reached his dream, we will discover together the evolution of the daughter method and the success of Andreas Bronsing in moving from leg to coronaries and performing the angioplasty. So, Jeanne, you talked about a sort of vision of Andreas. Can you tell us something more about his ideas? Vision, vision, the definition of vision could be a dream, a dream that a man can realize or different men can realize. And Andreas has a clear vision. He defined clearly his main goal. The main goal was to extend the indication to patients with proximal critical stenosis on coronary arteries. He was clear. And uh, to reach this uh, goal, he clearly defined the two first important steps how to do. First, you need to get an adequate catheter balloon angioplasty. Two, you have to evaluate the feasibility and the safety of uh, this balloon catheter on animals. But um, just to stay on the, uh, the balloon catheter, which was the idea of Andreas? It was a simple one, a double one, and uh, what he projected yeah. through that? Initially, he, he projects to have a double human catheter. And why double? Because at this time, nobody know what will happen by occluding a, a proximal coronary artery vessel. So, imagine the balloon inflated, and during the inflation of the balloon, to infuse blood in order to overcome the difficulty. It's genial, but anyway, this balloon that he projected should be very thin to, in order to, to, to get inside the catheter and then inside the artery with the plaque. So how did he found the way to develop this product? Uh, it, it, it's, uh, at this time, there is no, the notion of guiding catheter did not exist. Oh. The, so so it, it was just the balloon. OK. Again, commitment determination, clear idea of the outcome and why. So Andreas reached a very small startup created by a businessman, Hugo Schneider, with only one employee. The startup in Zurich was created in order to attract some innovation. And uh, they was uh, uh, convinced by the idea of Andras, and then they agree to provide him with a thin balloon, double man catheter. And it was test at the beginning, so they arrived to test this this uh, this device. He, he have a proto He was a prototype, a and prototype. he start the first case in Ilya country, just to be sure that this worked because it was easy in Ilya country, and it worked. So finally we can say that with this small startup, Andreas got the device to realize his dream. Yeah, he have a balloon catheter, so you have to, again, teamwork. He asked to his friend, Felix Meller in Bern, to perform iliac angioplasty by using this uh, balloon catheter in order to be sure that uh, this, this technique is reproducible. And it was. Can you present um, any result of this, uh, of this 
team approach, this first testing? You have a balloon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now the second walking axis is very important to test the feasibility and safety in, in animals. So again, teamwork approach. A cardiac surgeon, the cardiac surgeon is Rick, Marco Turina, prepare dogs with a, a stenosis on the proximal artery that allow Andreas to test in animals. So again, it was thanks to the, to the cardiac surgeon that he, he can test in dogs the concept of balloon angioplasty in a coronary artery. He was really support in order to understand if e his exactly. idea could work Commitment, in the heart. But I mean, at the same time, determination and the teamwork approach. The result was present in 1976. Everybody knows that. But for me, during the American Heart Meeting, 76, but for me, it was the first time I met Andreas and Richard Myler. It was my first contact with Andreas and Richard Myler. And it was a great moment because Andreas had a lot of time. Nobody was interested with this uh, poster in dogs. So Andreas had a lot of time and Richard Myler had a lot of time. And in front of this uh, poster, they explain me everything. First, this poster, the animal study, demonstrate the feasibility uh, in dogs, but also they demonstrate the risk of dissection of, of the plaque and neoandertalization, we mean the restenosis. So the these two issues were clear after this experiment in dogs. But in front of this poster, they explain me the long-term vision. At this time, cardiac surgery demonstrated a superiority over medical treatment only in patients with three vessel disease. Not superiority in patients with single vessel disease. So they say, first, there is a remaining question. What about the risk of embolization in human when we inflate the balloon in an atherosclerotic plaque? And then they say there is maybe a niche for such patients. I mean, no competition with a surgeon, but a niche in patients with single vessel disease. But the question was, what about the risk of embolization? And so how did they find the solution to that question? Teamwork. <laughs> teamwork. And teamwork with a surgeon. Richard Myler invited Andreas Grunzik to test the, the hypothesis of feasibility and the the risk of embolization during bypass surgeries. This thanks to a cardiac surgeon from a summary hospital. Again, Timor approach with a surgeon. And in May 1977, they test during bypass surgery the feasibility to delay the atherosclerotic plaque in human and the absence of debris. And it was conclusive. So indeed, if we want to recollect the, the history, he, he found the startup to provide the prototype of the balloon catheter. Exactly. Then he moved, always being support. He, was, uh, he, he moved to animals model and okay. he tried to test. And then, thanks to surgeons, he had the possibility to test the feasibility in bypass graft. It's an amazing story, but so what, what is next? 
which is the next step that Andreas did in order to get to Coronavis? First, uh, uh, Andreas met Elian Canepa. This lady played a very important role in the development of uh, angioplasty. Elian Canepa was a wife of Hugo Schneider in Zurich, the small startup. And at this time, she was graduate, and she, she find uh, uh, for an interesting job. And because Andreas worked with a smart, the uh, small startup, he met Elian Canepa. Elian Canepa was convinced, thanks to the charisma, thanks to the scientific rigor, scientific approach. Thanks to all the quality of Andreas, she was convinced of the future of this kind of procedure. And then the small startup began Schneider Medita Company in Zurich and manufacture what we call at this time the Grunzik DG Balloon Catheter 2030. So now we have a, the balloon. He has a balloon. So probably at that point he had another step to do. He had everything he wanted to work, but he probably he didn't have the permission to do that in human. So how did he convince the authorities to accept the test in, in human? So the key player of cardiology in this hospital did not believe in this technique. They was very conservative, no future for this technique. But the head of cardiovascular surgery, X scanning, and Marco Torina, the cardiac surgeon, together believe on the technique. And thanks to the surgeon, he have authorization and the Ask scanning, say, do it. If something happens, I will be there and I will immediately operate. What we call at this time the standby surgical approach. He was there, he, he was saying, and he said, do it. So we again we can say that work together with surgeons, with the team pro teamwork approach is the final answer to how we did everything. Commitment, teamwork. And so he did it, finally, he did it, wow. and he, he did it successfully. At this time he needed a patient, and the key players in cardiology did not believe on the technique. So his fellow, Bernard Meyer, Vinnie Meyer, introduced to Andreas a young man, 30 years old young man, with a single critical proximal lesion on LED. And Andreas spent a lot of time with this man to explain that he never done a new man. He have just uh, experimental data in dogs and during a bypass surgery that if the patient accepts, he will be the first one in the world. But he take time with the patient by using very ethical words. And thanks to that, he convinces this patient to, to accept and uh, to be the first. Because he was very charismatic, empathic, and the patient accepts. And in September 97, he performed with success the first uh, angioplasty in his man on the proximal LED. And then immediately after the procedure, the surgeon in the room, he called Richard Myler and he said, I've done it. I have done. I have done. <laughs> I success. He have reached his dream. 
finally he reached his dream in a very nice way and it's amazing that all this time later we always recall and we continue to develop this technique. First, uh, about the first page, this first patient. Look to the picture, 40 years later, in Paris, he was invited to participate at Euro PCR, and then you look in this picture with Bernie Muir that participated to the first angioplasty, and myself, and this man was still in perfect, con in perfect condition. Then you have to find a patient, and this was a most difficult because a key player did not believe in the technique. So you have to wait for two months before to have a second patient. Wow. Because the, 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 the key player said no future on this technique. And then he performed with the angioplasty, and then again, teamwork approach. You have to test the reproductibility of this technique. And he invited his friend uh, in Frankfurt, uh, Martin Katelbach, to perform the next choroangioplasty. And then alternatively, in Zurich or in Frankfurt, they perform the, the following uh, angioplasty, balloon angioplasty. Team approach in uh, 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 Richard Myler in San Francisco and Simon Sturzer in New York performed the same day, same time, he performed the same day, one angio PTCA in San Francisco by using the femoral approach and remember daughter Simon Sturzer performed coronary angioplasty using the son's Techniques. What doctor described, Simon Tesser achieved achieve it injury in New York. I think it was a real amazing journey in order to understand and discover the history of, of angioplasty and even to, to discover some humans behind with their training and with their feelings and with their ideas and why one got the success while the other not. And to, to, to indeed, we, we, we just live this dream together with them. So Jean, thank you for this amazing journey. So this series, Voices from the Past, Messages to Build the Future, moving from the US with daughter to Europe with Andreas Grunzig just gave us lots of messages to keep in mind. So I'd like to present them because I think it's important to outline what we learned. So of course we should start our project with the objectives in mind very clear and then to answer at why and how we have to reach out for these outcomes. Always have commitment and determination. Use a teamwork approach because one plus one is better than three. Have a strong work ethic and a continuous quest for improvement by clinical analysis of our result. Exactly. And uh, you see the difference between the daughter approach, child daughter, and step by step approach of Anders Grunzik. And this was a difference. And I learned all these key messages from Andreas Gronzik and Richard Myler. And they're very important. Scientifically analyze all the results with a critical spirit is a key. Consider the evaluation process not as a constraint, but as a way for improvement. And this is very important. I guarantee you, if you take ownership of this key message, I guarantee they will bring you success. So, thank you, Jean, and thank you, everybody, for having been with us. Thank you, Chiara. And you. we hope that these messages 
will be good for our future. For all the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.